home. A program in San Francisco looks to reduce exposure to toxic lead poisoning. I'm Peter Finch. It's 1231. CBS News Brief. At least 151 people have died in a Halloween celebration in Seoul, South Korea. CBS's Jen Kwon is in South Korea. It's like the first time since COVID where people were allowed to not wear a mask outdoors. And also, Itaewon is a major clubbing area, so there's always a lot of corners, there's always a lot of people wearing costumes. Former President Obama has been campaigning for Democrats in Wisconsin and Michigan. He spoke Saturday in Detroit. We've got politicians who work to stir up division, to try to make us angry and afraid of one another for their own advantage. It's a decision that could lead to starvation. The BBC's Debbie Ross. Russia says it is suspending participation in a UN deal that allows grain exports from Ukraine. Response to a drone attack on Russian ships in occupied Crimea. CBS News Brief. I'm Christopher Cruz. KCBS News Time 1232. Labor protests around the U.S. have surged during the pandemic, but a case heading to the U.S. Supreme Court could make going on strike much more difficult. In Glacier Northwest versus the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, a concrete company, Suda Union saying it intentionally destroyed concrete during a strike, and the court will decide whether the company is allowed to sue a union in the first place. For more, KCBS's Liz St. John and Chris and Carlo spoke to William Gould, Professor Emeritus at Stanford Law School and author of the new book, for labor to build upon, wars, depression, and pandemic. It seems like a long-standing strategy for conservative activists to get these cases into court and start chipping away at organized labor. Is this part of a broader strategy? I think it is. Uh, I think that uh, this Supreme Court has been uh, inhospitable to both uh, union rights and to employee rights. And uh, uh, as I see it, this is part of a broad pattern to undermine uh, the ability of working people to uh, express solidarity with one another and to exercise the most basic right that uh, workers have in a civilized society, and that is to withhold labor. All right, so if the plaintiff uh, concrete company wins, what would happen? Well, it would, uh, it would take away or circumscribe substantially uh, the ability of uh, unions to strike. You see, normally uh, cases involving uh, uh, the strike, uh, uh, unless they're actually violent or unless they're in violation of a negotiated collective bargaining agreement, uh, would be handled by the National Labor Relations Board, which has exclusive jurisdiction. Um, and uh, which does not entertain these kinds of damage uh, actions. Uh, since 1959, the uh, United States Supreme Court has pushed the uh, states and local governments out of the business of regulating private sector labor disputes, including strike matters, unless uh, there's violence or, or some threat to peace and order. And uh, uh, this would change that dramatically. This would mean that uh, whenever there's a strike and there's some claim of uh, incidental uh, property damage, uh, the, these matters would be brought to uh, the state courts, many of whom are uh, quite uh, hostile to uh, unions and labor policy rather than the National Labor Relations Board itself. Yeah, a lot of right-to-work states, and this uh, it seems like a win-win strategy if you are a conservative activist, because you get to attack the labor system, but you also, it seems like, are going after states' rights to a certain degree. Well, the, um, the Supreme Court said in 1959 that wherever Congress, and Congress can always change this, uh, regulates a sub on a subject matter in a detailed matter, uh, manner, uh, involving, for instance, the right of workers to organize, to engage in strikes, uh, there is an intent uh, on Congress's part to keep state jurisdiction out. Now, they, they demonstrated a different intent with regard to so-called right-to-work laws, but, uh, but outside of right-to-work laws and outside of violence itself, 
the uh, the idea is that this stays within the uh, jurisdiction of the NLRB and not the states because of congressional intent. Congress hasn't changed its intent, and uh, what uh, I fear is at work here is that the Supreme Court will substitute its intent for uh, the needed congressional intent. That's William Gould, Professor Emeritus at Stanford Law School and author of the new book, For Labor to Build Upon, Wars, Depression, and Pandemic. KCBS News Time 1236 will check traffic this early Sunday morning in just 90 seconds. Do you or a loved one experience pain, burning, numbness, or tingling in your hands, legs, or feet? Denville Neuropathy Center is one of the only clinics that offers a proven and exciting new treatment for chronic pain and neuropathy. Unlike other clinics, our technology is FDA cleared, it is proven to repair and regrow damaged nerves, and because it's so successful, most insurances, including Medicare, cover the treatment. If you're worried about your balance and the side effects of neuropathy treating drugs, call 925-270-1460 to schedule an appointment, or go to DanvilleNeuropathyCenter.com for more information. These days... One of life's greatest pleasures is being rediscovered. The joy of walking. We're finding our sanity outdoors. Take a hike among the old growth redwoods at Muir Wood and stand in awe of their majesty. Or go for a walk around Angel Island and revel in the stunning views and historic places. In the Bay Area, our walks are world class and the ideal antidote for these trying times. But to appreciate everything the Bay Area has to offer, You'll need comfortable shoes. The Walk Shop in Berkeley has assembled a great-looking collection of beautifully designed footwear created to enhance the joys of walking. And the Walk Shop's expert staff will help you find the shoe that's exactly the right fit. For hiking and walking shoes that combine style, craftsmanship, and comfort, discover the Walk Shop, 2120 Vine Street, Berkeley. Footwear for people who love to walk. Frank Munich's back. He's got our latest look at traffic. Starting where, Frank? Well, we're going to start this time around in Oakland for a new problem on the connector from westbound 24 over to northbound 13. We have a report of a car that's uh, struck a deer uh, that apparently on the shoulder, not blocking lanes, but uh, that might be visible uh, to uh, people passing by. Uh, we have an accident, at least in last report, blocking the far left lane of eastbound 380 just before El Camino Real in San Bruno. That's again blocking that far left lane. Uh, we're still seeing a little patch of slow traffic on southbound 160 at Sherman Island Crossroad on Sherman Island uh, north of the Antioch Bridge. That in the wake of an injury crash there. And keep in mind, uh, that we have uh, nightly road work uh, going on in Marin County, northbound 101 between uh, Bridgeway and Seminary Drive, heading out of Sausalito and over the Richardson Bay Bridge. Uh, various lanes uh, combed off there until 8 this morning. Your next update at 1248 on the Traffic Leader KCBS. Partly to mostly cloudy overnight. A little bit of fog out there as well, those upper 40s to low 50s. Plenty of sunshine for your Sunday, but a bit hazy, and we will start the day with some fog. Some expected highs later today, San Francisco, 64 degrees along the Embarcadero out in the avenues, 61 degrees. Oakland, Mountain View, and Fremont all looking at a high of 67. San Jose, Redwood City, and Napa, 72 degrees. Livermore and Morgan Hill, 76. Concord and Santa Rosa, 77 degrees. Traffic and weather together on the 8th on All News 106.9 and AM 740 KCBS. KCBS News Time is 12.40. We are all on this planet together. So join Odyssey and find your one thing. After Halloween this year, don't throw out your jack-o'-lantern. Use it to start composting instead. Pumpkins and other gourds are perfect additions to any compost pile. Also, you can add container soil and roots from seeded plants that have withered away. And if you have a garden, be sure to add garden waste from cleaning and pruning, like stems, roots, and leaves. Join Odyssey. 
and together each of us doing one thing makes a greener tomorrow. What's your one thing? California has millions of homes that could be damaged in a strong earthquake, and earthquakes are inevitable in the Golden State. An older home is especially vulnerable to earthquake damage, so you may need to take steps to strengthen it and help reduce the chance of damage. Visit strengthenmyhouse.com to learn about better protecting your home from earthquake damage. The work may cost less than you think and can often be completed